Hello everyone, I am Ms. Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we'll be learning about electromotive force, also known as EMF, and potential difference, also known as PD. So what we'll be covering in this video lesson are what are EMF and PD, how to calculate EMF and PD, and of course the difference between EMF and PD. Now first of all, you must be very clear about the difference between voltage and volts. Voltage is the physical quantity while volts is the unit which we use to measure voltage. A lot of students tend to mix up both, where they refer to voltage as volts, and when they measure the value, they express it in voltage. So be clear about the difference. Voltage is measured in the units of volts. So for example, if you were to measure the value of the voltage and you got a value of 12, it's 12 volts, not 12 voltage. So what is voltage? Voltage is the total work required to move a unit of charge between two points in a static electric field. You can think of voltage as a representation of the electric potential energy per unit charge. So what does this all mean? Let's look at this in the context of the electric circuit. So although voltage is applicable in electrical fields, however, I'll be covering electrical circuits only in this video. So if you have a circuit where you have a load here, which is the resistor, Voltage is how much work is required to move a unit charge. Remember that the unit charge here refers to how much charge the electron carries because current is actually the flow of charge, meaning the flow of electrons. How much charge does electrons are carrying as they move? So one unit charge, for example, could be the value of one coulomb of charge. That says one coulomb, by the way, not IC, one coulomb. So if the charge was flowing, it's how much work is needed to move the charge from one point to another point. So how much work was used to move the charge from the starting point all the way to the other point. So voltage is normally measured using a voltmeter which is connected in parallel to the section which we are measuring. So the calculation of voltage is how much work done per unit charge. And because work is a type of energy, it can also be expressed as electrical potential energy divided by the unit charge. So voltage is the general name for this particular physical quantity. EMF and PD are actually types of voltages. So what's the difference? EMF is a voltage provided by the battery. So, for example, if you were to buy a cell and the voltage written on the cell is 9 volts, that 9 volts is the electromotive force of that cell. So, EMF is a voltage provided by the cell. PD, on the other hand, is the voltage measured across parts of the circuit. So, for example, across one light bulb only. So for example, if I were to place a voltmeter across one of the light bulbs, this is the PD or potential difference across this light bulb. So if you were to look at the definitions, they're quite similar, but the difference is which part of the circuit we're measuring. So EMF is a work done by a source to move a unit charge around a complete circuit. Whereas Potential difference is the work done to move a unit charge between two points in a circuit. So it could be across one component, it could be across multiple components, depending on where we place a voltmeter. So for example, if we were to place a voltmeter across two light bulbs, that means we're measuring the potential difference from this point up to this point, across two light bulbs. So again, the difference between EMF and PD are that EMF is the voltage provided by the battery, whereas potential difference is the voltage across one section of the circuit depending on where we place a voltmeter. Now, for the formula of EMF and PD, you'll find that because they're both voltages, the formula is actually exactly the same. EMF is calculated as the work done per unit charge or also can be written as energy electrical energy per unit charge, whereas PD 
which is sometimes written as V, can also be calculated the same way. The work done divided by charge, or also could be electrical energy per unit charge. So the formula is both the same. You have to be aware, of course, when to use them. So for the EMF formula, the work done or the energy used is across the entire circuit. Whereas for potential difference, it's only for that section which we are measuring. For example, between the two points on this purple voltmeter or between the two points on the yellow voltmeter. So the formula look exactly the same. The difference is where we're taking the values of the work or electrical energy. Now let's learn about how we would measure voltage. Now voltage is measured using a voltmeter which is connected in parallel with the components in the circuit. Now what does this mean? Remember that voltage is potential difference. So potential difference is the work done to move the charge from one point to another. So that's why you have to put the voltmeter in parallel. Let's go look at the example on this bottom diagram first. So if you wanted to measure the potential difference across this lamp, you'd have to connect the voltmeter in parallel across this lamp. That means that the voltmeter and the lamp share a same starting as well as an ending point. So parallel means that the connections have two branches with the same starting and ending point. Because potential difference is the work done to move the charge between two points in a circuit, we place a voltmeter in parallel so that we can measure the work done between those two same points. That's why the voltmeter is connected in parallel. You need to measure the work done from the start to the end. So when we want to measure the potential difference across a component in a circuit, we place a voltmeter in parallel to that component. Now for the diagram on top, this is showing us how to measure electromotive force. So electromotive force is the work done by a source to move a charge across a complete circuit. That's why we need to put the voltmeter across the power source. In this case, it would be the cell. However, when we measure the electromotive force, you have to put the voltmeter across the ends of the cell when it's not connected to a circuit. That's why this diagram doesn't show us the complete circuit. You might be thinking, oh, this is just showing us part of the circuit. Maybe this is actually connected to some other stuff. Actually, no. Usually, if you look at a diagram like this, it normally does represent a partial section of the circuit. But in this case, this is all there is to it. This is the best way to get the actual value of the electromotive force of the dry cell. You don't connect it to a circuit. You put a voltmeter directly across the ends of the cell only. Why can't we put the voltmeter across the dry cell to measure the electromotive force when it's part of a complete circuit? Let's take a look at this in the next slide. So we've got a circuit here with many voltmeters connected across many different parts of the circuit. By the way, this circuit does include an ammeter. As you should have learned in the topic of current, ammeters are used to measure current and they're connected in series because current is the rate of flow of charge. So the ammeter is measuring how much charge is flowing through that point in one second. Voltmeters are connected in parallel because it's measuring the work done to move a charge from one point to another point in a circuit. So what are the voltmeter readings representing? Let's start first with the voltmeters across these individual lamps. Now, each of these voltmeters at the bottom here are connected across one lamp each only. That means that each voltmeter is measuring the potential difference across each individual component, which in this case is one lamp each. Is it possible to put the voltmeter across multiple components? Yes. For example, this voltmeter in the middle here is across two lamps. That means that this voltmeter will be measuring the potential difference across multiple components. It will be measuring the work done to move a unit charge across these two lamps. And as you can see, this voltmeter is measuring the work done across two lamps. That means that this voltmeter reading would be equal to the sum of both these two voltmeter readings. So what about the voltmeter across the dry cell? Is it measuring the electromotive force? Well, not really. It's actually measuring the terminal voltage. So it's called terminal voltage because it's placed across the terminals of the cell. But terminal voltage is not necessarily equal to the electromotive force. 
This is actually measuring the potential difference across all components in the circuit. So this voltmeter reading is measuring how much work is done to move a unit charge from this point on the circuit through the ammeter, through this first light bulb, the second light bulb, as well as the third light bulb, and if the switch was closed, of course, through the switch, and ends over here. The voltmeter is actually measuring a potential difference that's across multiple components, in this case, all the components in the circuit. So some of you might say, well, then isn't the terminal voltage here equal to the value of the electromotive force? It really depends on your syllabus. So if your syllabus, for example, in SBM, you learn about internal resistance, then no, the terminal voltage is actually less than the electromotive force because some of the work done is used to overcome the internal resistance. But if you're studying a syllabus which does not even mention internal resistance like IGCSE physics, then you might find that the value of the electromotive force is equal to the terminal voltage only because the internal resistance is negligible. So if you want to know more about internal resistance, that's something that I'm not covering in this video. So please watch my video lesson on electromotive force and internal resistance where we'll go through this in more detail. For now, that's the end of this video. Obviously, if you'd like to understand more about electromotive force and potential difference, you'd have to do some practice on some questions. In order to be able to do those questions, you would first need to learn more about electrical current and resistance. So learn up about those and then go do some questions and do check out my videos on where I go through some examples of how to solve calculation questions involving electrical circuits. So if you found this video to be educational and helpful, please click like and subscribe for more free physics lessons. If you'd like to help me keep making free educational video lessons and lab practicals, donations are welcomed at my coffee page. That's ko-fi.com slash physics rocks. If you would like access to notes, quizzes, and syllabus updates, do check out my website at physicsrocks.com. Happy studying!